I'm not going to rough you up, but we got to talk about a difficult situation. We uh, we see the uh, Chili Bowl where Kyle didn't race. Uh, you know, uh, Priority Aviation, they feel three or four really good cars. They didn't race. Uh, we see you and Kyle starting high limit sprint car series. In your opinion, what what's going on right now? Uh, that's the best softball I can throw you without <laughs> roughing you up. Yeah, it's 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 fine. Um, I don't have a problem. It's you know goes back to why we're doing it ourselves. You know, starting a series is because there's greed. We feel like there's greed out there. We feel like uh you know chili bowl is just one example it's not it, it's a big example and it gets a lot of headlines but basically you know it's grown so much over the years and you know i get that emmett Hahn doesn't feel like he has to pay more or put anything into the purse and that's fine that's that that's his business and that's fine but as a professional race car driver that makes a living racing if you want the best racers to go support the event I'm I'm certainly not going to leave my family for a week to go lose money in Oklahoma just because you know because I want to bring a golden driller home. No, I I mean I got to make my house payment. I got to pay the bills and you know so if I can't fly out there and stay in a hotel for five nights and I have zero chance of making money, then to me that's not a relevant event for you know or a professional racing event. You know we're racing this weekend in Sioux Falls, South Dakota for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to win. Every high limit race is on a Tuesday night, pays at least twenty five thousand to win or twenty three thousand to win, and has an eighty thousand dollar purse. The Chili Bowl purse is just, uh, you know, it's turning into more of just a, a fun event for whoever wants to go, you know, pay to race. And that's just not that's not our style. It's not my style. I mean, I think the Chili Bowl is an extremely fun. It's a great idea. They do a great job. Everything's everything's there. But as a professional race car driver, I just don't see you know, the economics of it for me, you know, or other professional drivers. I could go to Australia, you know, you look at Kyle, he's going and racing in Arizona for more money. It's just, you know, even though Kyle has a lot of money or people have money. NASCAR money. NASCAR, NASCAR money. And I'm going to get to that. You still want to go race, you know, for a, for a purse that you feel is justified. And, you know, the Chili Bowl to beat, you know, 380 people over the course of five days, the marathon, you and don't then, want to be used up. Don't don't <laughs> use me. Don't use me. Just you know, just sh- you know the there's economics to everything. It's a business, and you can and you can certainly look at how many people are there. Look at the pit pass price. Look at the grandstand price. Do a quick math and and know that there's uh, there's more money to go around to the racers, and especially you know the racers that you know make it all the way to the A main, and you know really are the they're the the, the, the show, you know, the, the guys Finish that are 10th and get $750. Exactly. It's just not, it's just not going to cut it. You know, you're just not gonna. So, I mean, it's not, it's not that I'm mad at Emmett. It's just that if he wants the chili bowl to stay relevant and have all the best drivers, the only way to do that is to, is to put the money up. Like some of these other promoters are doing, you're seeing it in late model racing. I mean, we're racing for a million dollars in a month at, over at Eldora it's just the chili bowl is not really in that conversation because they haven't kept up, you know, the purse. So I, I just, you know, I think there's, he's going to create opportunities for other events to, to pop up that pay more and, you know, racers are going to go do those events. So uh, I just did a um, Kenny Wallace show and uh, this is a conversation between me and you. I feel like sometimes people want to keep, I've been using this a lot lately. I feel like sometimes people want to keep dirt racing dumbed down. In other words, my show was you cannot make a living racing dirt cars. And I like what you're saying because you're saying I'm trying to make a living running dirt cars. So, for example, you know, I'd like to think you and I are friends. Two, three years ago, you come rolling up my driveway, you. Mm -hmm. And you're a world of outlaw champion. And you come rolling up my driveway in your pickup truck by yourself with your souvenir trailer. And I said, Brad, what the hell are you doing? (laughs) And you said, I got to sell souvenirs to make it. So I want to gather all this up. I say you can't make a living running dirt unless you're a four-time World of Outlaw champion, unless you're selling souvenirs, unless you're busting ass. 
So I'm going to say this and then you respond. What you're saying is let's make a living running dirt. Let's upgrade everything. And there's nothing wrong with that. Why keep ourselves dumbed down? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're, you're the, the part that you're right is the, is the gypsy life or whatever, you know, the life that you Va- call I it. call it a vagabond lifestyle, smelling <laughs> ass, toter homes, <laughs> clean your stuff up. So that's the part that you're, you're certainly right is the lifestyle and the sacrifice and, and the hotels and the parking lots and the road life is there. Do I make a good living? Yes. You know, there's not a lot of other things that I could make as good a living, you know, just with my skill set. obviously. I mean, there's no night time of- champ. Yeah. So, so yeah. And there's a handful of us out here that are making a good living, but it's very top heavy and it goes downhill really quick. So when you say, yeah, you, you can't make a living in dirt racing right this second, I would say after, you know, 10 or 12 guys. Yeah. You're, you're probably, there's, you're probably right that it's, you know, uh, it goes downhill quick, but they're making a living. They're just, they're doing it because they're so passionate that, or they love the the dirt lifestyle or they, they don't want to have a nine to five. Uh, you know, I get all that, but me, David Gravel, Donnie shots, uh, obviously like Jonathan Davenport, uh, you know, Carson would see all the, the guys, guys that are, kick ass make money. They we can make we can make money. I mean, if you go over here and you win Houston, we're getting, you know, like you you're you're right with your percentages. We get fifty percent of the winnings, you know, the good guys, and we get you we watched get, my show? I, I watched some you got all the sprint car people all you know, all the dirt track people all fired up because <laughs> they, say, they say, you know, Kenny said you can't make a living, but I think they just they misunderstand exactly what you're saying. You know, it's uh, to me like, yeah, you can, but you got to be, like you said, a four time champion in the Napa Auto Parts car owned by Casey Kane, battling it out for the, you know, the top level. And, um, you know, and you got to have good sponsorship and all the stuff. But yeah, that is the goal for, for Kyle and I is, is to moving forward is there, you know, on these streaming services, there's, there's a lot of people watching dirt track racing and it's certainly grown our audience. And, you know, the crowds are bigger. We sell more merchandise than we ever have. Um, there's more and more people watching these things every year. And, and we want to make sure that there's not a lot of greed happening. We want to make sure that, you know, we want to build these purses up, go to nicer places to where Kenny's conversation in a few years is, man, you can make a good living dirt racing. You know, uh, more guys can anyway. And, and uh, you know, you're seeing it for sure. The, the purses are getting bigger. Uh, you know, everybody's putting pressure. There's a lot of competition now. You have, you know, these four or five major sprint car races. I mean, you see it on the late model side. They have 10 or 12 major late model purses. So, yeah, if you can win those races and you can compete for championships, you certainly can make uh, a lot of money dirt racing. So I don't want to beat this with the dead horse just a little bit more. Uh, how many, How many teams follow the world of outlaws full-time this year right now i think we have 13 teams uh out on the outlaw tour how many of those drivers without naming names make a good living i would say seven six 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 or seven uh i mean the first three probably make a lot more and then there's a, a second tier probably to that that you'd still say is a good living then then past that you're just you're just doing it because you love it and you're passionate about it. Yeah, I'm going to wrap this up. I feel like the way you feel and a lot of people feel, I feel like racing can can be bigger and better, dirt racing. Because I, you know me, I, I'm all about dirt racing. I live it, eat it, breathe it. I just got done. I'm washing my car right now. Schrader shows up. And I said, I got to quit. I got to go down and interview Brad Sweet. So, I mean, I'm washing my race car. I love dirt racing. Absolutely. But but I feel like, you know, oh, it's dirt racing. You know, dirt's in my face. I'm like, hold on. (laughs) It's awesome. You know, I I want to bring a sponsor. I want to bring his wife. I want to bring his kids. Do we have anywhere that I can bring a sponsor a CEO of a, a major company. And, and, and I don't want the fans going, oh, they don't belong here because they're clean. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
Yeah, there's only a few vents, right? I mean, we do it with our Napa Auto Parts corporate, you know, people. We're not bringing them to, you know, a f you know, most of the tracks. But you would bring them here to <laughs> you, would, you would you would bring them here to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and they'd sit up in the suite, you know, yeah. and you and you'd bring them to the Knoxville Nationals and put them in a suite, and they'd be impressed. And you could go to Eldora, but past that, yeah, I mean, it's just like. Just like kind of what we're talking about with drivers, you know, past the three or four or five good tracks or, you know, that are really dialed in, uh, you know, yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you know, bring, bring people. And that's, that's part of the problem of why, why we haven't been able to grow like, like we want to grow is because the bathrooms are disgusting, you know, dirt and rocks are flying in your face. I mean, I, I agree with all that. And that's something that, that's a huge undertaking to, to fix that. But uh, obviously it's got to start somewhere and, we got to build more and more facilities that that we want to bring CEOs and uh, you know people can bring their wives. We, we want all thirteen drivers to make a living. Absolutely, running dirt. We don't want seven, and that's that's what you want. You want better for the sport. I want better for the sport. Absolutely, I want I want what you same thing you want. I'm just uh, I'm probably you know diving into it a little bit deeper here with this series and and things like that to try to you know, figure out how we can make that happen. So, uh, okay, that's an end. We, we, we said what we feel about dirt racing. We just want it to be better, cleaner, nicer, safer. There's nothing wrong with that. 